Mama told me not to come, not to come, not to come. Mama told me not to come, not to come. She said, that ain't the way to have fun, son. That ain't the way to have fun, boy. It's not a drink and we're doing the Big Lebowski Redux. What does that have to do with Big Lebowski? A song? Yeah. That song is his soul, man. That is the soul of the dude. I think that song's gotta be on the soundtrack, and if it's not, it's a huge mistake. I did an episode about a white Russian and a big Lebowski a while back, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it did not go very well. Oh my God, that is horrible. It was a disaster, okay? As many, many comments have pointed out, I hipstered it up way too hard, and I really screwed up that drink. Put that aside or something. And frankly, the dude does not abide, and this aggression will not stand. So, let's do it again. But this time, we're gonna get it right. And we're gonna then do a bunch of variations sort of um, evolutions and upgrades on the standard white Russian. I also got some facts wrong about that movie, you know. I said then that it was an overnight sensation. That's not true, it was a sleeper. Came out and kind of bombed and in 1998 and it took a while to get rolling. So I don't wanna waste any more time talking about this movie. We got a lot of drinks to get through. So let's start with the basic one, the white Russian, or as the dude calls it, a Caucasian which sounds racist, and maybe it even is now in this day and age, but I think it's a reference to the Caucasus Mountains, which are in the southern part of Russia. And this is a drink that we're gonna build in the glass. We're gonna build this over ice with two ounces of vodka, one ounce of Kahlua, and one ounce of, well, I mean, actually, typically, traditionally, I think in, when it was an IBA cocktail, it's, it's somehow fallen out of the IBA list. It was an ounce of heavy cream, but the dude prefers half and half, so we're gonna go with half and half here. I think, actually, we should build this over a cracked cube. Come on. <laughs> We're gonna start with Kahlua here. One ounce. And two ounces of vodka. And one ounce of half and half. Now here's where I went wrong on my last one. Of course, the IBA would tell you that this drink should be served layered, um, you know, as you pour it, but nobody actually drinks it that way. And in fact, probably most people don't even serve it that way. The dude would just stir it with his finger. That looks good to me. Mm. And it... The dude abides. That is delicious. <laughs> I mean, it is undeniably a delicious coffee milkshake cocktail. What an easy thing to drink, other than the fact that it's heavy and sweet. If you like a uh, Starbucks anything, I think this is probably gonna be right up your alley. It's the easiest thing in the world to make. Three ingredients, very simple. Uh, the only person in the universe who could have screwed it up was me, and I have, and uh, may a couple. The White Russian gets kind of a bad rap because it's sort of a um, disco cocktail from the 70s, the bad old days of cocktails, but it's good. It's just comfort food. It's like a milkshake in a glass. It is smooth and velvety and creamy with a little bit of that coffee flavor. It's got that dark chocolate kind of vibe. It's sweet. I would actually even say not too sweet. It's definitely on the sweet end of, like it's closer to not too sweet to not sweet enough. That's good, that's good. You can easily suck them up quick. Now, I mentioned that the White Russian had fallen off of the International Bartenders Association list of official cocktails, but the Black Russian hasn't. So now we're gonna follow that up. We're gonna do a Black Russian. Spoiler alert, it's basically the same drink without, without any kind of half and half or cream. So same idea. We want our uh, double old fashioned glass, an ice cube. Whatever. And I want to add one ounce of Kahlua and two ounces of vodka. A jigga digga do. We're getting a little low on our vodka there. Hold on a second. Let's got to restock. <laughs> this is just your uh, week to week reminder that legally to be sold as vodka in the United States of America must be neutral spirits, clear, colorless, odorless, and devoid of character. 
That's the legal definition of vodka. The Black Russian is not the dude's territory. We're out of the dude land, so we'll stir this hygienically with a spoon. The Black Russian. I think I prefer it with the cream, and, which is interesting because I'm exclusively a black coffee guy, except for like once every few months I want a cappuccino. You know what it is? This is trying to be a sophisticated cocktail, right? Like it is less approachable. Overall impression is that it's less sweet. People think take that for granted. Like dairy has a lot of sugars in it naturally. They don't realize that. Overall, this is less sweet, less smooth, less just like chuggable, so to speak. It's less like a milkshake. It's still not a sophisticated cocktail, so why, unless you're lactose intolerant, I would say go with the, the half and half of the heavy cream or the milk or whatever. You're, you're almost there, man. Make it into a milkshake. Just go all the way. Okay, we're gonna move on now though to sort of elevated modern, well, you know, hipster white Russian that are a little bit more upscale. Maybe I should take the bathrobe up and off, but I'm starting to really like wearing a bathrobe on this show. Let me know in the comments if you guys think I should just be bathrobe how to drink forever, because I this is comfortable. It's definitely, I got a TV over here that tells me what I look like. It's definitely not doing me any favors in here, but I'm not doing myself any favors in there either. So the first one I want to do is The Dude's Delight, which comes to us from Tim Webb bartender at DBA, which is down in New Orleans. Great bar, fantastic spot, uh, or so I'm told. I haven't actually been. So this is a shake and drink that goes in a coupe. But first, a word from this episode's sponsor, Flaviar. If you're here and don't know about Flaviar, well, you really should, because Flaviar was made exactly for people just like you. Flavor explorers questing after the perfect bottle. And what's the perfect bottle? Well, that's different for everyone. And that's why with a Flaviar subscription, you get a tasting box and a premium bottle every quarter. You're not limited to one. You can always purchase more delivered directly to your doorstep. And the experts at Flaviar are always coming up with new tasting boxes built around brilliant themes every month. Aged gins, tropical rums, Hemingway's favorites. Yes, thank you. But Flaviar is more than a box of magic in the mail. It's a community, a club for you to meet with your fellow flavor explorers and compare notes. You'll get invited to exclusive events to meet and mingle with your fellow flavor explorers and the folks behind the brands. You're ready to try new things more often and become a bona fide spirits aficionado and Flaviars where you start drinking better. Click the link in the description below to join the Flaviar membership club and also subscribe to their YouTube channel. That's right there too. And back to the episode. We're gonna start this drink with one ounce of cold brew coffee. Uh, now I want to add four ounces of whole milk. So many bartenders, they do like crazy, like, yeah, that's how I hold that shit, like between my fingers. I don't know what that's, I guess, actually in some ways, maybe I should do that. That does feel a lot more stable than like between my fingertips, but. Need a quarter ounce of Sambuca. Um, Tim Webb prefers Luxardo here. I was unable to acquire a bottle in time, but uh, I presume that Sambuca is mostly Sambuca. Sambuca is a sweetened anisette, for those of you who are not familiar. Um, I actually think this is probably the first time I've ever touched it. I remember that Sambuca in high school was the thing that like, the weird kids who thought they were cool drank. Maybe that was just in my high school, there was one weird kid who drank Sambuca. I need one ounce of the St. George coffee liqueur. That was the big mistake in my previous White Russian episode. Uh, here, it's actually called for. This is um, a coffee liqueur made in a New Orleans style, so it's got chicory root in it. And now I need one ounce of vodka. For some reason, Tim Webb prefers Rekia. <laughs> Barely knew ya. I think that whatever's in here is fine. Okay, we need some ice cubes in that. We're gonna do one big and one cracked. We're gonna shake it up, we're gonna put it in a coupe. Uh, a lot of people ask me in the comments, why do you do one big and one cracked? Well, Dave Arnold did a demonstration, I think it might have been at Tales of the Cocktail, where he thought he was about to debunk all manner of pretentiousness about ice, but instead proved that doing one big ice cube that was heavy and dense and a bunch of little pieces uh, was just the right mix of something in there to displace a lot of liquid, uh, throw around a lot of air, incorporate that into, into the drink, and then also the little pieces are really good at, you know, melting and adding chilling. So the best configuration in his opinion, uh, scientifically, was to do a combo of the two. Uh, to support that for people who don't have the ability to get giant big ice cubes like that, he made a thing called the BDX cube, Booker and Dax cube, which is a big weighted silicone food safe cube that you can throw in there instead of a giant ice cube. 
since that's not really doing a whole lot to provide dilution and chilling, that plus like, you know, whatever ice you got, your freezer ice kind of gets you to the same place. Okay, so first off, there's a lot more in here than it's gonna fit in that in that <laughs> rink. Um, that is frothy. Wow, man! I've never had this drink before. I like what came out of there. Holy heck! Uh, it's just a garnish, just with some cocoa powder, and I've got a dredger here with some cocoa powder on a screen. Um, that is a, a really aggressive way. So we're just gonna lightly dust that up. <sighs> yeah, I think we're in. I got a feeling I'm about to love this drink. This looks freaking phenomenal. And this is The Dude's Delight from Tim Webb at DBA in New Orleans. What a lovely drink. Wow. It's just so fluffy and light. The whole thing is just like whipped and aerated. And that combination of chocolate with the Sambuca, really, because um, you get that chocolate right off the cocoa there, the garnish. She takes it into like the dark chocolate licorice place. I love this drink. Oh my God. I can see that not being for everybody though. Not everybody loves like a licorice flavor the way I do. I, I happen to be a huge fan of that anisette black licorice taste. And that coffee too. You get that coffee in there. I, I personally, this is the first time I've ever had this drink. I think you could cut back the milk by even 50% because this is like, real frothy and real I it could be this could be stronger for my taste honestly but I really like it I really like it this is a great drink Tim thank you very much so this next drink is called the dude abides it comes to us from Daniel Thompson mixologist at the Nighthawk cinema and it was a drink uh, much like this one designed to celebrate the dude and all things dude and it calls for coffee infused vodka so we're going to do a rapid infusion right now of that because I didn't prepare very well for this and I thought it would be a great opportunity to uh, make some coffee infused vodka very quickly. So what I've got here is this is an ISI whipper that is made primarily for making whipped cream, but you can do super fast, super good infusions with this what would normally take hours, weeks, or days, why did I go in that order, hours, weeks, or days, can be reduced to just minutes. So we're gonna put a bunch of coffee grinds in there. Unfortunately, I think these are a bit more fine than I would prefer. That's okay. This is definitely gonna make us some potent coffee vodka. One moment while I get my jug of vodka. Believe it or not, this is actually Tito's. I haven't rebottled this or anything. It's not just ever clear with water added, but who would know the difference? That was about a cup of uh, coffee grounds. Dan's re uh, recipe calls for like a half a cup of grounds to two cups of vodka. In fairness, we might be about to make much stronger coffee infused vodka than this drink calls for. If that's the case, then we'll rebalance the drink a little bit. Infusions are, in the best of situations, tough to get exactly right. Okay, so we've got coffee and vodka in there. We're just gonna put the top back on here and screw it down very tight. We're going to put two separate nitrous chargers into this bottle and we're going to shake it each time, okay? I'm going to just shake it up a little bit now after the first charger goes in. It just, I don't know how necessary this is. Dave Arnold always does it. It probably just helps. Okay, that's one charger and now I'm going to discharge that charger. And what we're doing right now is we're just increasing the pressure in this pressure vessel. So we're going to throw another charger in there to increase the pressure. Officially and legally, this is against the law. Because you're only supposed to ever put one charger in there, and if you're going to put more than one, you should discharge the pressure. What can I tell you? It's not recommended on the packaging or by the laws or by anything, but I think we're going to be okie dokie. There are safety mechanisms in here to prevent us from overpressurizing this, and two is never going to get there. And you can hear it going in. It's really cool. Shake it again. That's about it. That's going to do it. So now what we have to do is vent the gas. And this process works better the faster you vent this gas because it's actually in the venting of the gas that the pores open up in your infusion medium that allow those two things to really uh, integrate well. 
Now ISI makes a special lid now. It's like a hose that comes over this way to help you with doing the infusion process. Using two cups or a shaker, you can really kind of achieve the same idea. We're gonna put this guy over the top here. A lot of nitrous is gonna come flying out of here. And at some point, liquid is gonna start sputtering out. What we wanna do is make sure we catch that liquid. And the way to do that is to use two cups like this. And now it's liquid and it's bouncing off the top cup. Okay, and we got a little bit of liquid out of that, right? There's not a ton in there, but we just didn't want to get it all over the place. And now I want to take this whole thing and I'm going to just pour it through a filter. I got an empty bottle. I'm going to put a funnel in it. Into that funnel, I'm going to set a coffee filter. Not really high tech, right? And just if anything's big to help the coffee filter, we're going to put this here. And we just want to strain this all out now. I'd say we did a pretty good job infusing this based on its color. So we did that quickly. It's good. It's good to do it quicker. Okay, so I've got my coffee infused vodka. As you can see, it's is dark coffee. Let's give it a taste. That is coffee vodka. So the first part of this drink to actually make the drink drink is to half fill this glass with dark beer. Daniel Thompson doesn't really specify, but I think Sam Smith's nut brown ale will do the trick for me. Okay, there we go, about a half of that. Set that aside and start shaking the rest of the drink. I want one egg white to start. A lot of people give me crap for not like cracking the egg on the corner here. I find that when you use a sharp edge of anything to crack an egg, it fragments really good. And it's very good at putting more shells into whatever you're cracking the egg into. If you do a few light taps around the egg on a, a flat surface, you can get a perfectly clean crack just like that. I, I've got so many comments, never crack an egg that way again. You people are wrong. You people are wrong. I'm not going to mince words. You're wrong. Flat surface, better crack, crack, tap, tap, then turn it, tap, tap. You will get a perfect crack all the way around the egg. I promise. The best part about wearing a bathrobe is that it's all towel. I can just dry my hands pretty much anywhere. We need one quarter ounce of walnut liqueur. I'm going to use Nocello. No, is it Nocello or Nocello? I don't know. I don't know. But someone in the comments is going to tell me. Probably many people are going to tell me. Well, actually. We need a quarter ounce of honey syrup. Honey syrup is nothing more than 50% um, honey and water. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio of honey and water mixed. Basically, it allows you to use honey in cocktails and have it actually pour. Uh, if you try to work with honey directly, it's so frustrating. Okay, we need a half an ounce of ancho rays. I don't know if it's ancho rays, rays or reyes? Ancho reyes chili liqueur, just a half an ounce. And now we need one ounce of our coffee infused vodka. So now because there's an egg white in here, we're going to dry shake this. And now we're gonna shake it with ice. One big and one cracked cube. And now we're going to float this on top of our half a beer. This is the Dude Abides from Daniel Thompson at Nighthawk Cinema. And as you can see, it's forming a kind of three layer look. We have this beer at the bottom, and this frothed up cocktail in between, and now it's building an egg white kind of nice foamy head on top. I'm, I'm actually really, this is really cool. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Okay, so the chili from the Ancho Rays is more experiential than tasty. Like it just kind of gives you that heat very subtly in this drink, right at sort of the back of your throat and around the tops of your mouth for me. The whole experience is just like creamy, velvety texture, super smooth, super chocolatey, super, oh, this is cool. This is really unique. That combination of beer and coffee, man, wow. Oh man, I love that, damn, that is cool. It's not very sweet at all and the beer is not overshadowed. You really taste the beer uh, it's just like accentuated by these coffee, chili notes, but with that, that egg white texture, it is, this is a very unique drink. I've never had anything quite like this. That is very cool. Um, and I would definitely say the dude abides. Although 
he probably likes this stuff a little bit easier to make with a finger. But even still, if he put it in his hand, I'm sure he would enjoy that deeply. Now the final variation on a white Russian is the Naughty Dog from Eric Castro at Polite Provisions. The Naughty Dog is um, actually, it's like a mishmash of a Colorado Bulldog and a White Russian, kind of slammed together, so you get the Naughty Dog. I do like a dog! Now we're gonna build this in a glass. One ounce of Kahlua. We want one and a half ounces of rum, and Eric Castro uses Appleton Estate. You know, honestly, I think it was the rare blend 12 years, but it was one of the Appleton Estates. A rare blend 12 years, can't really go too far wrong here. This will be excellent. One and a half ounces of this. Eh, that might have been a little more than one and a half ounces, but it was closer to one and a half than two. Now I want to crack a bunch of ice over the top of that. So we're going to crack some ice in there, put some ice on top of this drink. Basically, we want to fill the drink with ice. Now we want to add a uh, balance of root beer. Just look for a better root beer. I happen to really like Main Roots root beer, and that's what we have here. This is root beer by the Main Root. The carbonated pure water, fair trade certified organic cane, sugar, and spices. And now we want to just put a little float of heavy cream. And then I think we're going to hit that with a spoon and just sort of incorporate everything throughout. Uh, Eric Castro calls for a bit of fresh nutmeg on the top. We have such a thing. And this is the Naughty Dog by Eric Castro from Polite Provisions. Okay. You're gonna think I'm exaggerating. This is tastier than a root beer float. Root beer float is one of my favorite things of all time and this is basically a root beer float but grown up. So, tasting notes, root beer float, root beer float, root beer float, root beer float, root beer float. This is a root beer float, that's what it tastes like. But better. It's got more detail. You can taste that nutmeg, you can taste the roots, you can taste those spices. Um, this is scrumtrelescent, and I don't use that word lightly. Holy hell, I fucking love that. Look. There's no contest. I thought there was gonna be like, oh, what's the best? No, it's this, it's this, it's this. Just make this. The other ones are very fine. I like a white Russian, black Russian. I don't know why you would make that unless you're lactose intolerant. This was very cool, very sophisticated. The beer thing was so great. This delicious, very light, very easy to drink. This is heaven. I. Eric Castro, you are the genius of our time, truly. What a naughty dog it is. I love it, 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 I love it! <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it! Today we made a white Russian and four variations on it. Actually, the black Russian might even be the roots version of the white Russian, so three variations, one predecessor, something like that. If you like the show, I hope you're gonna subscribe. All my barware is provided by Barfly Mixology Gear. There is a link in the pinned comment below. If you like the tools I'm using, you should uh, check them out and pick them up. They're great stuff. Uh, my watches are provided by Crown and Caliber. If you're interested in watches, why don't you swing by Crown and Caliber using the link below and check them out. They're uh, great. The Big Lebowski centers around the pornography industry. Sometimes I wonder about what um, my porn name would be. And they say that you should take your middle name and the street you grew up on to get your porn name. My porn name then would be Joey Ravenswood, which I think is actually a really solid porn name. So, this is Joey Ravenswood. Here to fix the plumbing. I'm here to really get deep into your pipes and clean them out.